What would you say if you saw Rob Halford right now? I'd jump his bones. left in the storm What I am is all that really matters now The lies of God The lies of God My name's Paul. We're here with SDEntertainer.com with the legendary metal god Rob Halford. Uh, you're in town promoting your new record label Metal Gods. So why yeah. don't you tell us a little bit about that? You know, I, I've... I'm still having a wonderful life doing what I do. I've been making metal music now for over three decades. And um, I've still got all the passion and the enthusiasm and the energy that you need for something like the world that I live in as a performer on stage. But um, I've always been intrigued about how it all connects and particularly in the, in the business side of things. So uh, in recent years, um, we've set up uh, two or three companies actually based on the platform of Metal God Entertainment and one of them is the label Metal God Records which uh, at the moment we're using to facilitate a lot of the, the reissues of some of my solo activities and uh, that's just to make sure that we've got the machine working because we work with um, a lot of distributors throughout the world and uh, you need to get all your pieces into place before the next step which will be um, in fact right now we're, we're inviting talent to submit whatever you want to us to, to listen to and uh, maybe uh, you'll end up on the Metal God label. So yeah, send some stuff over and you can get all that connection through um, robhalford.com. Um, what will you be looking for as far as establishment with the bands that you'll be bringing on? You know, is it going to be more based off the talent of the band or how well established they are in their respective communities? Or At the end of the day, it's, it's the music, you know, a song is a song is a song and um, I, we, we'd like to think that the model that we, we're trying to create is a little bit um, based on how it all began for me when a, when a record label knew that it would take two or three, four releases before you got established, you know. So we're, uh, we're, we're going to be pretty selective. We, we don't want to sign everybody under the sun just to make a, a quick dollar. That, that I think is, is not the right way to, to, uh, to behave, quite frankly. You're currently living in Phoenix, but you have a place here. Uh, how often do you actually get to make it out to San Diego? I seem to be spending more time in San Diego now. We use a, we use a company apartment here, and um, uh, I, I just love this just general area. We're, we're in um, what's called Midtown at the moment, at the Park Manor Suites Hotel, which is a wonderful historic establishment. I'm all for preserving this kind of thing in communities. I think it's really important. But uh, yeah, I, I love it. I love this location, and um, in all of my journeys throughout throughout America, two of, two of my favourite places are, are still San Diego and Phoenix. So yeah, you, you'll see me walking around, you know, as, as most people do in this neck of the woods. So, uh, but I just like the, the whole vibe, whether it's in the um, in the Gaslamp district or up in the, the Hillcrest area. There's a, there's a ton of great places for, for, for great, uh, great food, entertainment of course especially. Every night in the week there's, there's a band playing in the San Diego area. Again all kinds of music, whether it's metal or rock, or jazz, blues, the lot, you know. It's a, it's a really, um, really exciting city to live in in that respect, culturally. You try to make it out to a lot of shows? I try to. It gets a bit difficult for obvious reasons, but, but I try to, you know, and um, um, one of my favourite places has always been the Casbah. That's, uh, that's like the CBGBs of the, of the West Coast, really, when you think about it, all the incredible talent that's gone through there. Yeah, so. But anywhere, you know, you pick up the local rags or look on the internet and you'd always see something 
exciting going on in San Diego every day of the year. Uh, you have a four octave range and really good control. Uh, were you classically trained, or is this just something that you were kind of born with? No, I, I mean, everybody can sing, you know, that's a fact, you know, some of us yeah. sing. So, yeah, but I mean, you know, everybody can hold a tune, whether it's off-key or not. And you know, that's why people sing in the shower. It's the greatest feeling in the world to sing. It's a wonderful God-given gift, you know, and, and you just belt it out, whatever. It, it's, it's the best feeling, but um, I'm just lucky. I'm just lucky. I just had this... Um, this, this uh, chance to to use this voice and I did did a few things when I was a kid at school you know with local um, theatre presentations that are a commonplace you know I really encourage that side of it for in education for kids especially you know uh, it's really important that local authorities can provide the needs through the school education system for for kids to get together to learn to play music musical instrument or to to be a part of a, of a performance in a play whatever it might be uh, it's um, it's important for for lots of reasons it's great for discipline it's great for for really you know seeing what you've got inside of you and I think it, it develops you as a, as a person everything is important in education but I think the arts particularly as to, to give a, to give a kid a chance to play an instrument or to be in a, a stage show, whatever it might be, is very very valuable. So uh, that's what I did. I I, um, I, I just learned that, that I got this voice, and you know, I've been singing since I was what eight, nine, ten years of age, and um, just lucky that I've got got this voice that can still do some extraordinary things. And there it is. What can we look forward to from Metal God and from you yourself? More metal. <laughs>